Facebook and Instagram rolling. What's going on, everybody? So we here we are Sunday night. We're here for our solution Sunday. Um, first and foremost, let's get a shout out. Uh, what's up, Whitney? How's it going? Um, let's get a shout out for the Atlanta Falcons. Heck of a win against the Niners. Super excited about our uh, what is it the fifth win of the season. We're really rocking, but the fact that we just knocked off a now 11-3 and three team, I'm super excited about that. Um, definitely where our team should have been performing this year, um, and instead they have not been performing, so it's pretty disappointing overall. Um, but at least we have a little bit of fight left in us, so it was a good game if anybody watched it. Um, one other shout-out for the, uh, the wifey, the ho-ho-ho hold my beer with the pocket. Um, this is the sweater that we've been wearing to all of our holiday parties. Um, we have matching ones, naturally, and uh, she's been super excited about it. So I had to wear it for this video um, and obviously share the uh, beauty that is this shirt with the world. So you're welcome for that. And now for our wonderful dad joke, also provided by Heather. She uh, thought this was rather fitting for me personally. Oh, oh, Whitney, good call, good call. Uh, shout out to the mother-in-law. Happy birthday, mother-in-law. Um, it is a birthday day um, that has been pretty awesome and exciting. So I think there was a little bit of a party up north in Minneapolis for her. Um, come summertime, I'll come up and celebrate that birthday. But for now, I'll enjoy the not negative degrees weather down here. Don't know how cold it is up there, Whitney, but uh, I think it's probably pretty terrible at this point in mid-December. Oh, man, you're going to remind me of all the shout-outs. And Aaron, of course. Um, little sis, uh, little sister-in-law, I guess. Heather's little sister. Aaron um, just graduated with her bachelor's degree up north and will be heading to chiropractic school. Um, Heather is talking about it in about six months come the fall. She'll be heading to be a chiropractor long term as an animal chiropractor. So that's super exciting. A little bit of a different uh, path for chiropractic, but I think it's pretty awesome. The more we talk to folks about it, the more um, apparently it's actually a pretty booming industry for animal chiropractic. So um, that should be pretty exciting. So definitely some good things happening in the Clement households in Minneapolis. Lots of good stuff. Um, all right. So our joke of the week. I had to write this one down so I didn't mess with this one up because Heather was so excited about it. All right. Why shouldn't you visit an expensive wig shop? I had to think on this one for a minute. I did not get the answer right. Um, Heather was giggling the entire time I thought about it. And once I tell you the answer, you'll know why. I think she's actually giggling now. I see her on the sofa over there. I think she's giggling still about her joke. Why shouldn't you visit an expensive wig shop? It's too high a price to pay. All right, it's funny. It's funny. If you can hear her, she's still giggling in the background. All right. You know, it's. I guess she thinks it's funny because I'm bald, but... I feel like I've got a good polish going on tonight and um, looking pretty sharp with my cue ball. So there's our smile of the day, our joke of the day, and the shout outs of the day. Um, on to business with our scenario. I've got my uh, notes from that continuing education seminar I went to. Um, if you recall, our What If Wednesday was discussing what if an active assailant comes into your place of work, what do you do? Um, that includes anything from somebody that's wielding a firearm to somebody that's wielding a knife or a box cutter or a hammer or a baseball bat, you name it. It's somebody that's coming in to be aggressive and do harm to others. Um, so it's definitely a, a broad spectrum of weapons. So think of it more of an active assailant, not just an active shooter. So you can differentiate when and how you need to act. Um, there are several different things you can do. There are two leading thought um, our theories, I guess, that are out there that I want to discuss, they're, they're pretty much the same thing. You know, you start comparing um, apples and oranges or apples to apples, and they're essentially the same thing. I think the most common one people talk about is run, hide, fight. Um, you can run, try to escape the situation, and get out of wherever you are. 
um, hide. Obviously, you're going to hide in an office, hide in a closet, barricade as much as you can, uh, and stay out of the line of sight, therefore not becoming a victim of the assailant. Or fight, where at one point the statistics were overwhelming. It was about 80% of active shooters, not active assailant, but active shooter situations were um, stopped at the first sign of resistance. So that's where the fight came from. It came from a very, um, very long research of active shooters where fighting and presenting that initial line of resistance stopped the situation and saved quite a few lives. So you can run, you can hide, you can fight, but whatever you end up doing, you definitely have to commit to what you're doing. If you're going to run, you need to, you need to run, you know, go get help, go out where you're safe and you're not becoming a hazard for other people. Um, unfortunately, sometimes that may mean you're, you're leaving other people to save the greater number. You know, you're not, you don't necessarily need to stop and help everybody along the way. Um, you need to get out, you need to get help, you need to get somebody moving toward you. Um, with hiding, I mean, that's pretty simple. Find somewhere to bunker down. And with fighting, you have to, I mean, I'm just going to say it bluntly, you have to be prepared to stop the threat. So that means you might have to take a life. You have, might have to do something to protect your coworkers, your friends, your family, um, whoever may be around you in a situation. It might not necessarily be while you're at work. Say you're at the movie theater and you're, you're with your, your wife, your, your husband, your kids, and an active assailant appears you know, fighting might be the best option. The likelihood is you're not going to escape unharmed, but the likelihood is also you're going to save a ton of lives. So that's the one prevailing logic that is taught right now, but that also very much coincides with um, active shooters, not necessarily just active assailants. Um, so we're trying to be more broad in how we're presenting information so that we're kind of hitting everything A to Z, not just one linear line of thinking. So we're thinking active assailant. One thing that was brought up during the conversations we had was avoid, deny, and defend. Um, very, very similar, obviously. Um, but it, it, there's small tweaks to that that I took away. Avoid isn't necessarily run. When you say run, you're thinking let's bolt toward the exit and not stop. Um, avoid could be a cat and mouse game where you're continuously moving just to avoid the situation, helping people along the way, um, just avoiding the assailant that is doing harm. Um, denying could be very much different than hiding and barricading. When you barricade, there could be several issues attached to that where it could take you several minutes to barricade, it could take you several people. But then you're trapped. I mean, at that point, you're just stuck where you are once you barricade. So that could be a very dangerous situation for several other reasons. Um, one of the statistics they brought up, and I mentioned it at one point. Um, I'm going to see if I can find it real quick. But um, there's actually more people throughout the world, not just America, but throughout the world, there are more people using fire and um, acid for attacks than people are actually using guns for attacks. That's why we're talking about active assailant. So if you think about barricading yourself and the assailant starts a fire, you could really be putting yourself in harm's way by not being able to escape the situation. So that's where using deny, deny the person instead of, um, instead of hiding, you know, it's still more of an active mindset where you're not just hiding. Okay. Bunker down. I'm fine. It's Let's continually deny the assailant from gaining access to other people, gaining access to yourself. And the last one is defend. Um, a lot of people don't want to have the mindset of fighting. They don't have that mindset of, oh, I can go fight and essentially kill this person or stop this threat. So they want to look more into defending themselves, defending those around them, defending life. Um, so, it's, again, just a little bit of a tweak on it, but it's just enough to... I, I guess frame it in a different fashion where somebody might understand it a little bit better. Um, so I really like the way they explained that the avoid, deny, defend instead of run, hide, fight. It, it kind of just, again, changed it just enough to be a little bit more applicable to situations outside of active shooter. You know, this can be applied so much better across active assailant situations where you don't have to worry about fighting. You're just defending 
Um, so it's much more of a defensive, more articulable. You know, you're in fear for your life. You're defending yourself. You're defending others. That falls in the line of when um, you know violence is permitted within the law. So if you're thinking about that type of mindset instead of oh I went and fought the person or I went and attacked the person, that changes your mindset of something you might not be able to uh, mentally grasp as well uh, post situation. So definitely interesting. If you ever want to talk about this in a little bit more in depth, um, I would love to have a conversation about it. Explain my viewpoints a little bit more. If it wasn't clear, um, if it wasn't clear, somebody please just you know hit in the comments what wasn't clear about it. I'll happily explain as much as I can. Um, one interesting book that came out of that that I've read that I'm going to reread um, as just a resource to help you understand the mindset of law enforcement and the mindset of military. Um, it's called Left of Bang, and what I wanted I want to reread it so that I can help incorporate those lessons a little bit more into what we're doing in the corporate world as we do more training. So Left of Bang is talking about um, you know you start left you know as you read you go left to right so it's talking about starting on the left of the bang. So essentially, it's before the bang occurs. What can you do to prepare yourself before the act of assailant or before the bad situation happens? Um, and that whole book talks about how to get your mind right so that you are prepared to act left of bang. And you're doing the proactive measures that are necessary, which is exclusively what we teach uh, with the, within the company is what can you do to be proactive proactively mitigate threats, proactively mitigate crime, proactively mitigate negligence and liability within your business. Um, so go read that book. It's fascinating. If you're in a leadership position and you have any type of liability attached to what you do, the decisions you make or the decisions you don't make, um, definitely go read that book where you kind of start understanding the concepts of how you can be proactive in preparing your company for success and not for negligence. So definitely a great resource. Um, that's about all I have for y'all tonight. So I think it's some good input. Um, I, I really enjoyed it. I really liked learning that in the in the session. Hopefully y'all enjoyed my joke. Um, I think those are definitely going to stick around. I've gotten some good responses from that because I'm actually smiling now. Um, so thanks, Matt, for the great information. Um, Whitney, I, our district uses the acronym REACT. Um, R is recognize red flags or indicators of the problem and trust your instincts. I think that's fantastic, Whitney. The fact that you're at least the, the district's at least planning it. I think that's phenomenal. Uh, a lot of places down here don't have the foresight at this point to start planning. And I think that's key. <coughs> Excuse me. I think that's really, really key um, where you at least have to have some sort of plan in place, at least a preliminary plan. It's really difficult for me to come in and just create because I don't know the situation for you. I don't know the environment. So it's really hard for me to create from scratch without spending an extensive amount of time. But I can definitely come in and tweak what's already there. So if you have something like React in place, which going by what R stands for, um, that's huge because recognizing red flags, recognizing indicators, that's huge, huge, huge. Because they talked about one situation where – the morning the active shooter occurred at this company, the guy went around talking about, I'm going to shoot up this place. If they call me in the office, I'm going to um, I'm going to do harm to everybody. I'm going to kill everybody in here. Those are some pretty big red flags. And the problem was they didn't have any type of observe and report situation. It was literally nobody mentioned the fact that this guy is going off on this tangent. So that's like a little bit more blatant, but that's a huge red flag. If he's, if he's saying, this is what I'm going to do if they call me in the office. Well, guess what? They called him in the office. He had a pistol on him. And he shot all four people in that room and killed them all. So if you have those red flags, definitely report what's happening. Um, when you just put in, it's recognize, evaluate, act, communicate, and take inventory. I really like that, Whitney. I think that's a phenomenal uh, baseline for how to, to frame the conversation with the company, um, especially the evaluate, act, and communicate portion of it. I think that's huge. Um, I'm a huge believer in trusting your instinct. You, I can't tell you how many times uh, police, military, you get that weird feeling, you, the hair stick up on your neck. If you've never felt it, um, I think you probably just aren't in tune with what the feeling is. 
but trusting your instincts are huge and having that evaluation, um, the logic of acting and then communicating all that is so big because you want to make sure everybody is conscious of what's going on. It's huge to think about, um, actually making sure the people in the floor below you, the people in the office next to you, you know, it's huge to think about, they need to know what's going on too, right? There needs to be some sort of alert system. You know, if you're a baseline employee and you don't have access to some sort of comm system, you know, tell your boss who may have access to it. <coughs> Excuse me. So definitely communicate. I, I love that. I love that, Whitney. That's definitely something you should reinforce there. Let them know they're doing a good job with that. Um, they just need to make sure it's something that is practiced. You know, uh, one big failure I've seen several times is they have something like React or Run, Hide, Fight in place, but they never actually have tried to implement it. Um, you can have the policy in place, but if you never practice it, people may not understand what communicate means. They might not understand what the practice of communication is. Um, so if you're going to have that, it's a phenomenal starting point, but definitely not an ending point. Um, so definitely applaud y'all for doing that, but um, definitely keep going with it and keep it going. Um, other than that, y'all have a good rest of the Sunday evening. Go Falcons. Great win. And I hope y'all have a phenomenal week moving forward. And I look forward to talking to y'all on Wednesday. See y'all.